Miss Amy. I appreciate you stopping by. Today I am going to be painting on this beautiful smooth white candle. I am going to do just a demonstration on how to paint a cherry tree blossoms or how to paint cherry tree blossoms I should say. I will be using two flat brushes a number 10 Getting used, still getting used to my new setup here. Number 10 and a number 12 for the brushes. And then I'm going to be using a fine line brush, the Westonia brush, which is my favorite. If you watch my videos, you will be very familiar with that. Then my paint, I'm going to be using Warm White. Teddy Bear Brown real brown. There you go. Wicker white. Berry wine. And then moon yellow. Now all of these paints are folk art paints. Most of them are the uh, multi-surface paints except for the, the one, the warm white, which is a enamel. And yes, I do use enamel paint on every type of surface. So, don't be too shocked on that, but yes, I do. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using my browns, and I'm not real happy with this brush. started here again. I just like to have a lot of movement in my bristles and that was pretty stiff. This one's a little bit better. And all I'm doing really is, because you can't really see my plate here, is just kind of multi-loading three different paints on here to get my branch. And I'm just going to be demoing with the front of the candle, so bear with me here. I'm not going to do all around the candle, which would be nice, but just for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to be doing the front. Alright, so you're going to go ahead and get your branches in. Now, if you want it thicker at the bottom, which is you know, pretty typical, you can actually bring it clear down to the, the base of the candle, but you can't really see. It's right there. And make it thicker. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag in some of these other paints, the paint colors, I should say, not other paints, but the paint colors, just to make it uh, a little bit more opaque and thicker. Because then when you branch off, then you can make those a little bit thinner as you go. And again, I do like things to be opaque. So I like to cover it up with as much paint as possible. Now on this candle, I was trying a little bit of something new where I coated it first with the Mod Podge for glass, uh, the dishwasher safe. I don't know why I chose this one because I have all the other ones too, but went ahead and, and coated it with that, just hoping that it would, not that I had a problem with my one before, but hoping that it would give it more, I don't know, more uh, more grip. Because the only problem I see, and I have painted, painted candles before, is that because, you know, typically, you know, it's wax, obviously, and you can get some, oh, you know, that can be a little bit e hard for the paint to adhere to it. Not impossible, but if it's handled very much, it can be, especially if you're doing this on the types of candles that are uh, pre-lit, you know, with the battery kind of deal, not, not with flame, which is probably what I would recommend, just so that you're not putting a, a flame on on this with the paint. 
I know a lot of people will burn these down a little bit and actually sit one of the battery operated tea lights down in it. Because you just don't want to cause any kind of a fire or it be a fire hazard of any sort. Alright, so I'm trying to do some just some thinner, you know, typically I do them a little wavier. I'm not real thrilled with this brush I'm using right at the moment. I'll be honest with you. But typically I would kind of intertwine them a little bit. But I think you know, you're getting the gist of it. It's not really as far as how to do it. Pretty much with anything I try to teach, it's you know, go whatever feels comfortable to you. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this now. If you get to a point where you know you're ready to start painting in the blossoms and you want to maybe hit this with a heat gun for a second just to uh, get it to be a little bit more you know a little bit drier so you're not painting on top of the, the wet then that's fine too um, let me go ahead and do that here for just a second all right so then the next part that i'm going to go to will be to show you how to put the blossoms on and I will be using the smaller of the two brushes, which is the 10. And actually on this part, I'm just going to be using the quicker white and the um, berry, the berry wine, I should say. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to use the wicker white will be at the top. And I'm just going to do just kind of a, it doesn't have to be real roughly, I'm kind of making it more ruffly than it needs to be here. Let me go over this a little bit. It's kind of like it to be pointed and a little bit out like that. Now if you want to make it to where it kind of looks like a bud at the top, you can do that. starting off here you can make it look like that if you want and then come down with a couple full ones and the nice thing about this is that you can actually turn the item as you're working I just gotta make sure I get it back on the back on the camera and then I'm just going to do another kind of push pull now a little bit. You can make them smaller too. They don't have to be as big as what I'm making here. And then maybe just come down little ways and do a little bit more of an open kind of a oops and then I'm going to do maybe a couple little rounder looking kind of like buds they're not going to be full flowers by any by any means, and I could actually even do them the opposite color. And this basically you know, kind of rotating the colors like this a little bit just gives it a little bit more interest. All right, so we're going to keep going and hopefully, hopefully I didn't stick my fingers too much in it. Pull it out. And then just keep going with it. And then just 
just keep going with it, just like I'm doing. And I kind of like to space it out a little bit. Maybe even make it look like it's a, the back of a flower. And of course if you're doing this and you feel like you need to go over, go over it again, it's not as, I don't want to say as dark, but it's not as filled in as you want. You know, obviously, go for it. Another, another little bud here. And then just kind of keep going with it. Got to remember to turn my paintbrush around though, right? Get too much paint on your brush. I'm good at scraping the brush off. I thought this was a pretty design. And you know, something that would be really neat is to actually do this fine all the way around your all the way around your candle. But again, I'm not I'm not gonna do that today. We're just going to concentrate on uh, just what I'm doing right here. And you can leave some of the, the branch exposed or cover it up with, with the flower. And that's where I say, you know, if you feel like it's too, too opaque, just go back over it. It's fine. The only problem would be is if you have, like you're, you're painting, I want to say like over it, but you're painting and you are layering over the top then it's a little bit more difficult but like say this one right here since it's open and there's nothing painted over the top of it I could easily throw some more color into it and then that way hopefully it's more opaque and not so transparent Right. Alright. Like that. And I'm just going to leave it like that, I do believe. So the next thing I'm going to do is get that center. Actually, let me do one other thing before I do that. I am going to do this cute little thing up over these. I don't know how well I can do it with this little brush. I might have to come back in here. Let me do it with this. Get some of the white off of here. Because I basically want to do it with the all the have all berry wine on it. So this is not something that's loaded with oh the white. It's just the intent is to have it be strictly the berry wine. And it might pull some of the white because the paint is still wet. Again, that's fine. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. And you can do this, you know, wavier, wigglier, you know, make your your leaves come down more. It's fine. Okay. So then with my my nice little liner brush, I am going to come in here and paint in some centers. I need to get this moving here. And I want want it to be pulling out from the center, not pulling.
pulling to the center, but pulling out. And it's okay however you get it in there because you're going to do dotting over the top. So this just gives the open flowers, you know, your little, I always forget, I always, I know the stamens on the inside of the flower. Keep working on it here. Bend that out a little bit if you want. It's not a biggie. And let's see on this one. I am going to go ahead and do. Could have put another bud or another flower there under it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. Tap in a center. And actually, I always forget you know, to turn this. I can turn this. I really can. Get caught up in doing it and then I forget. Here we go. And then, you know, you can even do like ones that are kind of closed up. You want to add those in there. You can do that too. Now on this thing, I'm not going to have any leaves. I'm just leaving it at this. On these, I'm not going to be brushing the little, I don't know if they're tendrils, what they're, they're actually called. But I'm going to then take my little brush here and start getting in the, start doing the little dotting. And I'm just going to do it with this brush try to put it in as thickly as you can because I think they're pretty they're pretty full and I'm going to be doing it in the yellow and the brown I think I'll do the real brown since it'll show up better I don't want to it's not dotting really dabbing. I said dotting earlier. Apologize. I mean, if you can get dots, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. And hopefully I'm still on my camera. Sorry, I get so into painting that I'm not paying attention to that. Apologize for that. And I did stick my finger. I always do that. It's silly because I do have other things I can use when I'm doing this painting. It would help me with that, but I, I don't do them. I just keep sticking my fingers in. Yeah, I guess I want them to be kind of full. So it's a lot of dotting or tapping, however you want to reference it. design. Please give me a big thumbs up if you like this video and the design. If you're new to my channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and then the notification bell that pops up with it uh, so that you get notified whenever I post something new. Don't want you to miss out. I am trying to do a lot of different types of painting videos whether it be on glass or watercolors or whatnot, so 
uh, please you know, stick around for that. And again, I'm just going to leave it at this. Stick into the paper. All right, so said so I did stick my finger in part of this flower over here, and I can fix that. But anyways, there you go. Just a pretty little flower, um, not flower, but cherry tree blossom, my interpretation. And I think it's a beautiful candle that you could gift. If you want to paint candles to give as gifts, uh, maybe make some neat little baskets, put neat baskets together for the holidays and give them out as gifts. Wouldn't that be awesome? Throw in a hand-painted candle. I like the battery-operated ones just for safety reasons, but regardless, these are pretty. So, again, give me a big thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks again for taking your time to stop by and view my video. And uh, stick around and see some of my other videos while you're here. Anyways, until the next time, I appreciate you stopping by. You have a good one. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.